Imagine this. Late at night on a busy motorway, your tyre blows. You contact a breakdown service and then stand back in the dark, nervously watching the traffic pass. While you wait, you witness the mobility you've just lost from the outside. It's a dense surface of murderous movement cutting across your world. Nothing could be less like travelling inside a car. When this last happened to me, I found it disturbing, to say the least, thought-provoking too, with computers set to take over the driving experience. I felt like an excluded outsider, contemplating futuristic combinations of, of people and machines. And it's these thoughts I now consider in relation to the concept of synergy. Of course, driverless cars will not be more synergistic than older forms of transport. The, the travellers we see are on a train. They're commuters. Having bought tickets, countless moving parts now carry them along and a comprehensively engineered environment gets them to and from work. As on a motorway, their bodies are given over to a system. For example, they've surrendered themselves entirely to a railway company's timetable. And, like a speeding car, their vehicle restrains them the legroom between the seats, the fixed position of the tables. However roomy, a carriage is still a container, still a restricted space in which their freedom of movement is limited. But, but limits can be creative, they can be synergised, and, and perhaps these commuters demonstrate how. One of them is an artist, it's me, on my way to teach in an art school. The other... The other is Professor Volker Straub, a specialist in neuromuscular genetics. We consider ourselves to be advanced practitioners in our fields, and the universities to which we were travelling employed us on exactly those terms. Consequently, on this particular commuter service, cutting-edge genetics routinely met with cutting-edge contemporary art, and synergy did seem to flow from the encounter. Yes, the carriage restrained us, but our conversations were unrestrained, expansive. We were not yet at work, so free to outperform ourselves. You could say this was a spontaneous and dynamic association. That's what synergy is, and, and academics do love to promote it. However, nothing we did was planned or even foreseen. It was the adjacency of the seating that did all the work. We just sat down and began to talk the train speeded us along and we kept talking because, perversely, being stationary was the topic of our conversation. Yes, being stationary. Apparently, the genetic material my companion researched is not that dynamic. Much of it's inactive. It's a mystery. We carry forward DNA that's no longer effective. There are genes, encoded ones, that replicate functional information and then there are non-coding ones that don't. It's tempting to call the latter junk. In the early days of genomic research, this is the term they came up with, junk DNA. A jokey name. doesn't sound very scientific. And indeed, over the years, the concept has frequently been challenged. After all, DNA ought to be doing something. Which is a challenge museums face in contemporary public life. It's not what we see on display, but what we don't see in the storerooms and archives. A reserve collection could be described as non-coding. Until, that is, a curator goes in search of something new to exhibit, or an archivist decides that a particular storage box has long been mislabeled. The geneticist agreed. Research often advances in association with a want of advance. He told me about an an archive of frozen muscle tissue that's an important research tool because the samples have been stored in this state for decades, for both of us then. Storage represented common ground between science and art. Who'd have thought it? Well, we did. Not just as the train speeded us along, but also whilst we waited at signals and at level crossings and at station platforms and Every other kind of hold-up each of us routinely experiences on the way to work. Commuting is all starts and stops, isn't it? Whether you're in a car or on a train, 
your enhanced mobility is never that enhanced. And, and when everything stops, what's stored can be salvaged and repurposed. That's what the geneticist was saying. But, but what, if, what if stopping is just stopping? What if, for example, non-coding DNA has evolutionary consequences simply because it doesn't code? And what if a reserve collection matters precisely because, by definition, it's held in reserve? Look at this gramophone record I'm holding. It dates from 1946. The material is acetate. I know that a message was recorded on its surface. These, these grooves still store those sounds, sounds that in the 1940s made gramophone needles vibrate. The message was a verbal one. But even when nothing was said, needles vibrated, like non-coding DNA. Ambient noise influenced the transmission of information by shaping the way the record was heard. Inactivity is more active than we think. The geneticist was, was telling me something I already knew. It's, it's my record. I inherited it when my father died 20 years ago. It was one of his post-war projects. Following demobilization, he and his brothers set up a, an audio letter business. They built their own recording equipment. And throughout my childhood, test samples like this were stored in the loft of our family home. On rainy days, I would play them on a wind-up gramophone and hear my father speaking before I was born. Sadly, they're unplayable now. The acetate is turning to powder in places you can brush it away with your finger. Even so, they're not junk, are they? Then they're not synergistic either. They're non-coding. My father's voice is still here, although no gramophone needle will release the sounds inscribed on the acetate again. Thus, this object endures. It's vividly present, but without a function. Unless, that is, its presence in my hands today, the hands of a contemporary artist, herald something new and different. Imagine coming across an unfamiliar thing like this in a museum store. It would function like an artwork an artwork that is seen rather than heard. Try it out. Here, now, before your very eyes, synergy might quietly go to work again. Something we can't quite imagine yet could be coding soon. Thank you.